I think if you know the American presidents, I think there was something uh, said similar uh, in a different context. But um, it's not because it's not easy, that's why we are doing it. Um, I think it's important to underline this. And I would like to say also, uh, maybe uh, it is not a discussion which started now with the new uh, presidents and the new uh, commission. It's already going on for, for quite some time. Uh, I mean, uh, there have been many transitions. Uh, there have been transitions that our commissioner um, also was, um, um, Elisa Ferreira, she has uh, steered actually the process of transitioning the textile industry in Portugal. So I think there are quite many uh, examples. Let me also say that um, um, there are uh, certain things which need to be done quickly anyway. I mean, I'm coming back to this example of Poland. It was mentioned Katowice. If you go to Katowice, you will see that this region, uh, the city has totally changed. You don't really smell anymore when you go in, uh, in winter, the S uh, SOX uh, of uh, the cold and it looks much better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, in, in Poland, for example, 36 out of 50 cities are the most polluted. Uh, 36. And there's really an issue to meet and to tackle this, getting away with coal as quickly as possible. Of course, I mean, this is not something which can be done, and nobody talks about it has to be done by tomorrow. There is a pathway, there are time, there, there's an objective, uh, 2050, and I think I said we discussed it before. There will be, of course, milestones when it comes to the programming of the Just Transition Fund. There will be milestones over the next years which need to be met to, towards this objective, important to underline. Uh, I also am not so much, I heard it a little bit from my colleagues who disappeared, uh, but uh, there's something interesting, and I think there's a behavioral challenge as well. Um, when you look to the world uh, traffic, uh, air traffic statistics of last year, the growth is still around 4 to 5 percent worldwide. So there's not very much change, and there's a lot of talking, but there's not very much change. So there's a behavioral challenge as well. And I think you see it already here. When you go to the big agglomerations of Europe, you see that the mobility has changed fundamentally. And I think this is something which can be done by, by, by quickly also with some political uh, um, uh, leadership and, and willingness, of course. And I think everyone appreciates uh, that you are not run over by cars and that you are not going to be confronted with these engines. So I think there are many, many examples. So I think it's important this behavioral change, which is something which we have to think about two more points. The first one, I would really like to say, let's not create an east-west divide. And that's not really the case here. There are many uh, similar challenges in Spain, in regions in Spain, even in the Netherlands, in Groningen, which was the major gas field, which is phasing out gas for environmental reasons, because the buildings collapsed there. Uh, and therefore, there is also participation of the Groningen province in the Just Transition Fund. And there are challenges in Spain, in Western Macedonia. There are thousands of people depending on coal mining and power generation. It's not really the East uh, in Western Macedonia. So keep this in mind that this challenge has every member state to some varied degree. But the challenge is share, in fact, and not split. And I think this is something that we really try to underline. And of course, the final point is, and I think it was really interesting, by the way, and I would say this vote, which I only partly could follow because of my non-existing language skills, but I don't think so it would be very much different in other member states. Maybe, I mean, okay, I know that the Czech Republic likes nuclear, the Austrians don't like nuclear, the, the Germans have phased out coal and nuclear, but so, okay, this question might be different, but the 50-50 split about whether it will actually be advantage, advantageous or not to the industry, I think is actually something which I think would find, presumably, in many, many member states. And therefore, I think there's an international obligation to us to understand this argument that we have to be careful about losing our industrial base. But let me assure the Germans have the same concerns. The German automotive industry is really, of course, something that they are looking very careful. But what they are saying is basically, yes, this change needs to come. Maybe they learned a hard lesson. I mentioned these engines before. But I think there's now the rethinking about, I'm not so sure whether electric cars are the future or hydrogen is the future. I don't know yet. The industry should know that actually. But they have to embark and they're doing uh, already 
research, innovation, and so on. And it will, of course, take time to get the uh, mobility on a different uh, footing away from the CO2. It will take time, but it's doable. Uh, and of course, let's keep in mind that we are at the forefront, that there is a European leadership, but also let's in mind that we have to be very, very carefully to lead, but to lead not alone. I think this is important. Therefore, there is actually an obligation to the heads of states and also in relation to WTO and so on. So thank you. I'm alone here now, so I don't know how we go on from here. <laughs> Jiří Jeřábek, já jsem z organizace Greenpeace. My si myslíme, že Evropská unie by měla přehodnotit a zvýšit ty cíle pro rok 2030 s pokračující klimatickou krizí. A i se ukazuje, že například obnovitelné zdroje jsou levnější a levnější, že technicky to bude možné. A hold prostě když je krize, tak se musí ty plány přehodnotit a ty plány přehodnocují i ostatní. I ČES přehodnotil plány a když před deseti lety zapnu jadrnou elektrárnu, ten ani měl vypnout uhelné elektrárny a nic se nevyplo a deset let vyvážíme velké množství elektřiny a zbytečně tady pálíme uhlí a znečišťujeme planetu. Takže vlastně si myslíme, že tohle by mělo přijít. A ohledně těch financí si myslíme, že by měly být na oplátku za to, že Česká republika se zaváže k něčemu, co bude lepší než business as usual. To znamená to, že pomalu odpácházíme od uhlí, to je fakt, ale měla by Česká republika říct, že bude rychleji, o tom se snaží ta obranná komise, ale ta obranná komise nezabere všechno, například těžbu uhlí pravděpodobně nebude řešit a my vidíme, že stát není ochoten říct, kdy bude končit těžba uhlí v regionu Ostravském, Moravskoslezském, kde vlastně OKD před dvěma lety řekl, že zavře těžbu do roku 2024 a minulý rok zase navrhlo, že bude těžit až do roku 2030, což je 100% státní firma, takže si myslím, že by ten stát měl dodat nějaká čísla, kdy dokončí s těžbou uhlí, aby i těm regionům a těch ekonomice dal signály, že teda opravdu je potřeba se transformovat, a ne, že to bude takové vágní, že se bude rozhodovat prostě jeden rok tak a druhý rok tak. Já, děkuji. Myslím, že uvalá, kdo se s vámi jádře do konce letošního roku. Chce tak tomu něco podotknout, pane řebitele? But I mean, um, just a more generic response. I'm not commenting on any renewable energy targets. I think uh, this is uh, not really the topic today. Uh, but let me say that uh, I think uh, it is important to say that we are requiring, and, and we will possibly discuss it very soon, uh, the preparation of a, a territorial transition plan. And I think uh, this is, of course, a plan which has various elements. It has an element of uh, how economic transition, economic social transition should be uh, steered, um, who is doing what, what are the objectives. But of course it has a sort of, uh, this is a plan actually which is steering investments and uh, I think we will look very careful and I don't know what will, because we have not even started yet, but I can make, of course, uh, I can assure you that we will look very careful and not just us, but uh, also the other services in the European and the Commission about uh, dealing with climate issues or energy issues to see what are the commitments uh, uh, over the next years towards uh, a carbon uh, neutral uh, economy. So, uh, as I said before, um, the objective, the political objective is 2050, and we're talking about 2030. So I think we want, uh, of course, not to be in a situation where we say, and we have a plan saying, everything will happen in 2031, no. Uh, that will be, of course, some sort of uh, progress towards an objective, which I think is also something which we will monitor, as I said before, all cohesion policy programs, and this is part of cohesion policy programs, will be reviewed in 2024 already, and I think already in 2024 there should be some sort of uh, 
uh, achievements which give us some confidence that we are going in the direction which we all want. So I mean, uh, there's also, and I'm not uh, talking about this now, but there, of course, everyone who knows that, there are obviously more possibilities under cohesion policy about corrections and so on. So I mean, this is, of course, something which is not just a, a document, this transition plans, which is going to be put aside. No, it's the leading document to uh, tell us uh, and you where the investments will uh, go, not just about uh, the fund, but also about the two other pillars. Again, these two other pillars should contribute to the objective of transition in the regions identified, but they are not necessarily in the same eligibility, meaning there are more flexibility for investments, if necessary, in other in energy infrastructure. Uh, and I think this is important to keep in mind. This is not something which we would finance in the just transition fund proper. Dobrý den, jmenuji se Míka a jsem z Česové advisory a není to tak otázka jako prozba, pane řediteli. Vy jste tady, a při té diskuzi to zaznělo, a, a vy jste na to zčásti reagoval. V České republice je globální změna klimatu zjednodušeně politickou reprezentací zúžena na to, že není a nebude voda. Nebude voda a proto, když si tady uděláme programy na to, že tu vodu zadržíme, tak jsme pro toho zadrželi. Ten problém je daleko komplexnější, obávám se, že nám uniká. A potom dojdeme opět do toho, co se v minulosti tolikrát stávalo, že v Bruselu o něčem rozhodnou. Oni v Bruselu a my tady to vnímáme jinak. Nedopuste toto. Podle mého soudu ten Green Deal musíte prodat. A tady si myslím, že má Evropská komise a Evropské instituce velké malinko, když se to nestane tak se budou opakovat chyby v minulosti, které například vedly i výstupu Velké Británie. To je prosba k vám, děkuji. Děkuji, poprosím o reakci. Two things. The first one is, uh, um, as I said, the Just Transition Fund is part of shared management. And there's a basic principle in shared management is that there are, of course, certain policy objectives, which are the policy objectives which I have shown before from that point of view. Uh, there are negotiations now for these member states about the money's concern. Uh, the whole budget is uh, now going to be negotiated. Let's hope that there's some sort of uh, breakthrough uh, this week. Uh, the Just Transition Fund is part of these uh, negotiations. Uh, and here again, the our heads of states uh, negotiating um, uh, about where in which areas the money should be invested. So here again, and you remember the discussion before about the Euro uh, European summer about the Green Deal, you know very well the position taken by two member states, one other dimension was also in the Czech Republic when it comes, for example, to nuclear energy. I think it's important to reflect here also that there is, of course, a word in these discussions and a weight in this discussion. So it's not like it's stopped down from Brussels. Uh, when it comes into the regulations and the implementation, I think here we will negotiate as any other program where what makes, uh, where should the money go, which should be the investment areas. The first uh, outline will be presented next week in this famous annex DBs, which indicates in which areas we should invest in the three regions concerned, and maybe we discuss it later too with the experts here. Uh, but this is uh, in a partnership, and I think it is also important to underline that this is a partnership. So we are not going to, 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 to tell you what you have to do, and then you have to do it, no. We will possibly uh, invite you to read it carefully, to look to our analysis and come forward with arguments which are um, um, then uh, possibly um, um, accepted or not accepted, but at least uh, decided jointly. Let me come to this question about Brexit. Uh, I don't think that we have to discuss Brexit anymore, but uh, what underlying is that this policy for process possibly has some sort of uh, uh, reflection in regions which are against Brussels. I think everyone who knows about this in Ostrava, in Katowice, in Western Macedonia, 
people know there is an obligation to create adequate jobs for in Eastern Germany, and this is important. They are not really against, uh, so far as I know, against phasing out uh, coal mining, because coal mining is a hard, it's a very, very hard job, as you might understand. I don't know, I was once or twice in a coal mine as a visitor. Okay, I would not want to work there, but of course these are very powerful uh, also uh, industries, particularly also in Poland, particularly also in parts of uh, Eastern Germany. But people want to have a, a, an adequate job created, and that's the obligation. That is the obligation we have. Not going to create jobs which are once or a fraction of the salary which is actually paid for mines and power stations related. This is our obligation. This is the obligation of uh, politicians uh, and us to help actually to create the jobs in innovation. Uh, and I think it's not just uh, an innovation, one or two jobs or research or whatever uh, uh, generates high quality uh, uh, employment. It's also an obligation to keep the people there. Demographic change is one of the key themes coming up now because there are regions which are depopulated. Uh, I have mentioned before some of these regions. And there is also coming back to the issue about the, uh, you mentioned about uh, the satisfaction of uh, the same in the councils. Therefore, I think we have to listen carefully and we have to be there. We have to have this uh, regional approach, we have to have this territorial approach for creating jobs in uh, in the sector of machinery, why not in IT? We have heard about this, but also to provide a clean uh, environment to keep the people there. Maybe also infrastructure, I would like to say, because this is important to understand. We are not financing in the infrastructure under this just transition fund. But the such transition fund is only part of it, and therefore, the really the nicety and the advantages to bring it into the cohesion policy. Uh, funding possibilities because this allows them to supplement the complementary infrastructure, maybe on transport to finance and so on. This is actually what we want to do. And there are many examples. I mean, if you go to parts of Eastern Germany now, these uh, countries have changed totally. If you go to parts in Poland, these areas have changed. As I said before, if you go to Krakow, if you go to Katowice, Katowice is still a mining town, but you hardly see it. Or if you go to Sweden, not really. If you go to Kulkirona, for example, in Sweden, this is a mining town. We don't know that they are actually deep mining, it's iron ore mining, so it's not coal. But of course, I mean, this is important for the economy. But if you go there, it's not the mining which we have understood 20 years ago. Also, the mining industry can change. So I think this is important what I wanted to say. Don't be afraid about this. It's not going to be easy, and I said before, but it's not the reason why we are going to embark on this. Já děkuji za závěrečná optimistická slova. Můžu dodat, že optimismu je více než u českých účastníků debaty. Děkuji vám, že jste se zúčastnili. Děkuji za soupení Evropské komise, České republice a kanceláři Evropského parlamentu a také Konfederace zaměstnavatelských a podnikatelských svazů České republiky a České podnikatelské reprezentace při Evropské unii. Jejich jménem se vás také dovolí pozvat na občerstvení, které se koná v zadní části této budovy. A jenom poprosím na závěr, nezapomeňte, prosím, odevzal hlasovací krabičky. Děkuji moc a přeji vám příjemný světek dne. Děkuji.